This morning, I'm going to um, speak on Romans chapter 7, and um, it's the letter of love. And I'm just, I'm just thankful for Romans. <laughs> I'm so thankful for this book. Um, he's been having me on this for like a couple of weeks now. And, um, and I'm just so thankful for the word. I'm just going to pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for your living word, the power of the word the power of the word that transforms our hearts and our minds. And I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you, you help me to bring this word in such a way. May you just have your way with this word. May it land in our hearts. May it transform us. May we walk away changed by your living word. May you wash us with this living word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm going to read from the New King James this morning. I try to pick up a new version every now and then. You know, I, I love the King James, but I just wanted to read it from the, from the um, New King James. Read from the law. Or do you not know, brethren? For I speak to those who know the law, that the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives. For the woman who has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as she lives. But if the husband dies, she is released from the law of her husband. So then, if, while her husband lives, she marries another man, she will be called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress though she has married another man. Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ, that you may be married to another, to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bear fruit to God. For when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law we're at work in our members to bear fruit to death. But now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by. So that we should serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Um. We wanted to focus on Romans 7, 4. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law of the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Um, married, married to Jesus, married to the living word. I wanted to speak to that. You know, I, I've, I've read this before, but I don't know why this time around when I came to it, it was like married. We are married to Jesus. We are married to the living word. You know, the old letter, it was, um, you know, it convicted of sin. He could, the old letter convicted us, acknowledged our sin. But when Jesus came, he brought the grace. You know, Moses came with the letter of the law, but Jesus came with the grace, with the love. And we are married to the living word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, married. Married. When I when I when I kept looking at that word, married, married to the living word. Um, you know, in a marriage, the husband protects us, the husband keeps us, the husband provides for us. It's a covenant. It's a covenant. It's a mutual covenant. It's a mutual um, giving and taking. It's a mutual love. And the love of the word, the love of the living word, um, the word keeps us. The word keeps us. And, you know, I found two scriptures about it. But when I, when I kept saying, like, he keeps us, you know, he keeps us, he keeps us from sinning. He keeps us in his love. 
He keeps us in his presence. It's active. That marriage, that married married to the living word, marrying, married to Jesus, it's active. It's, um, it's a keeping. And I found these scriptures, Psalm 19, 12 to 13. Keep me safe also from willful sins. Don't let them rule over me. Then I shall be perfect and free from the evil of sin. So we no longer walk in the flesh. We walk in the spirit. We walk in the newness of life. You know, we've, we've, we've been, we died to our sin. We were buried in Christ. We, we were buried with him. And when we came up out of that autumn, we were baptized. We were new in the spirit. We walked in the newness of life. And I recall, I still recall when I was um, baptized, right when I was baptized, this um, wonderful woman's chrono chronological Bible study gave birth into the church that I was saved in. And right away, he had me in that study. And I didn't really know how to read the word. And he had all these seasoned women around me. And so for six years, I read the word um, and it was Bible in a year and it was chronological. I love the way it was the chronological read. Um, but for six years, I was in that study and and he just lovingly, very lovingly had me, you know, I was being introduced to him that way in the living word as my husband, like right away, I, I, you know, Jesus was my Lord. He was my savior, but right away, it's like, I took hold of him as my husband in the word. And, you know, these seasoned believers, these women, they were very patient with me. They were encouraging me in the word and that living word did transform me. It gave me love. It, it gave me like um, the truth. You know, I, I was lied to in a lot in my life. And when you read the truth, you just weep, don't you? If you've been believing a lie all your life, and then all of a sudden you read the truth, you just weep. I think I, I just wept through the Bible the first two years, just receiving that truth and letting that truth heal me. Like letting that living word heal me from all those lies that I fell for, that I believed. And it was like a reprogramming of my mind and a healing of my heart, a healing of my soul through the living word. And it was like, it was like a, it was like a marriage. It was just, it was a marriage. It truly was because I was so desperate for the truth. You know, I was so desperate. I just hung on and, and father, he was so loving to me. He knew what I needed. And he just put me in that for six years. It was so wonderful. It was so wonderful, that living word that washed over me like water. Um, that next Psalm is the Psalm 119, 11. Your word have I treasured in my heart that I may not sin against you. It's that word. It's that living word that's a guide to us, right? The word is a lamp unto my feet and a guide unto my path that keeps us from sin when we're walking in the spirit. Now, we can, we can, we can definitely veer into the flesh, but we are no longer to be ruled by our flesh because we have a newness in life. We have the Holy Spirit in us. And, you know, we just check ourselves, don't we? We just need to check ourselves from time to time. Are we walking in the flesh? Are we walking in the spirit? And to get back in that spirit. Hallelujah. Because that's where the newness of life is. Hallelujah. 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 I wanted to um, continue with um, being married to the word. Ephesians 5, 25 to 27. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. The washing of water by the word. You know, when we yield to it and we truly yield to this living word, it will, it, when we truly yield, 
Holy Spirit will show us like why why is he why is he focusing on this one scripture out of this chapter like why like why is he focusing on it and when we really yield there could be healing there there could be something that he's trying to speak to us something that we need to work on something that needs to be healed in us a different mindset on something and you know it's this glorious living word <laughs> it's being committed to the word to, to give and take with the word, to speak to Holy Spirit about, you know, your questions that you have on the living word, what you think it means. And then he comes back and he lets you know what it really means. <laughs> and it, it's just that mutual love, that mutual communion, the mutual um, talk that we have when we're in the word, that communication that's so vital. Because we could be taking a scripture out of context completely and not completely receiving the truth of it hallelujah that he may sanctify and cleanse us with the washing of water by the word hallelujah you know he's um the church he loves the church he's given me such a love for the church and you know the church has to come individually to him in the word like you all know but i'm just always struck by i'm always struck by the living word, that it's alive, that it comes alive in us when we, when we come to it in faith, knowing that when we open the book, wow, like has a sigh ever come over you? Like I'll open the word and I'll just sigh. It's like coming home. <laughs> it's like coming home. It's so wonderful. It's so wonderful that you know, we live in this time where God has given us everything to be victorious down here. When you think about the Old Testament and the New Testament, wow, you know, we have everything. He's given everything to us. You know, the Holy Spirit came upon the prophets, but we have the Holy Spirit residing in us all the time. He never leaves us or forsake us. We need to yield to the Holy Spirit when we don't yield to him. We, we can crush that and no longer hear from the Holy Spirit. But he's given us this word to stay yielded to the Holy Spirit, to walk in the newness of life, to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. He's given it all to us. I'm so thankful, Father, that you've given us this living word to abide in. You know, um, that scripture, I sing it all the time. Um, I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. I will abide. I will abide. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. You know, as we abide in him, as we abide in his living word, we are protected in the shelter of his wings. We are protected. Hallelujah. So wonderful. So wonderful. Song of Solomon 4, 2 to 6. I sleep, but my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh, saying, Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled. For my head is filled with dew, and my locks with the drops of the night. I have put off my coat. How shall I put it on? I have washed my feet. How shall I defile them? My beloved put in his hand by the hole of the door and my bowels removed for him. I rose up to open my, to my beloved and my hands dropped with myrrh and my fingers with sweet smelling myrrh upon the handles of the lock. I opened to my beloved, but my beloved had withdrawn himself and was gone 
My soul failed when he spake. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called him, but he gave me no answer. He tells us in the word to seek him, to seek him early, doesn't he? There's a psalm that says to seek him, to seek him early in the morning. You know, when we get that call and we get woken up early, like at three or five, he has something important to say to us. He wants us to come and have communion with him. And you know, this woman, like all of us, right? We can, we can roll over and go back to sleep. And this woman was like, wait a minute, I don't want to dirty my feet. You know, I don't want to, you know, I don't have a coat on, it's cold. And, and how she missed it, right? She missed, she, she missed him at that time. She didn't get up right away. And it was interesting how the myrrh, the myrrh was on her hands, you know. Um, Jesus, he's referred to the lily, that he's the lily that pours out that sweet smelling myrrh, the word, the word, the word, the word, his love, his loving words to us intimately. Um, but he pours out to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm, I love the song of Solomon. I want to go back to Romans 7, 6. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Now, in the beginning of Romans, he was saying that he was speaking to those who knew the law. And, you know, we know the Ten Commandments, but there was also laws that they kind of added on, right? All their rituals, all their... You know, their do's and their don'ts, um, you know, including, you know, the Sabbath, that you're not to work on the Sabbath. And this was brought up a lot in the New Testament, right? When Jesus came on the scene, um, that they were really hugging the letter. And they had the living Lord in front of them. They had the, they had the, the living God in front of them. And, and, and they were still hugging the letter. And they weren't embracing God. They weren't embracing the love of the law. They weren't embracing the grace of the law. They were hugging. They were hugging the legalism of the letter. You know, I remember that time that the time in the word where Jesus cursed the fig tree. You know, after he had just cleared out the temple, he was in righteous anger. They were setting up, it was like all about money the exchanging of money in the temple and he cleared it out. And in the temple, he began to preach and he began to heal the sick and the blind and the lame. And, and the Sadducees and the Pharisees were there and they did not like what they saw. You know, they didn't like, they always came against Jesus for healing people on the Sabbath <laughs> because they wanted that legalism. They wanted, you know, no work done on the Sabbath. And, um, you know, after all of that, Jesus left and he was walking and he was hungered. He said he was hungered and he came to a fig tree and there was no fruit on it. And he cursed that fig tree. And, you know, I took it at the slant of, um, you know, not them, the people of Israel not having faith, not receiving him. And also that letter of legalism. Um, but he cursed that fig tree and that fig tree died. And then he became the curse on the tree. It was the only way. It was the only way. He was the propitiation for our sins. He was the only perfect sacrifice. To redeem us back to Father, to bring us peace with God. It was the end of the oldness of the letter. It gave birth to love. It gave birth to grace. The veil was torn. We were able to enter into his presence through the sacrifice that Jesus did on that cross for us. When he rose from the dead, we have that newness of life now. We have the newness of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, I'm, I'm reminded not to to be legalistic in the word. You know, let, let the grace, let the love of God 
be the forefront. And when we walk in the spirit, the fruit of the spirit comes, right? The fruit of love, joy, peace, meekness, suffering, self-control. All the fruits of the spirit come alive in us. Hallelujah. We have to be so watchful of not following into that legalism that Jesus came to free us from. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The love of the word, the grace of the word. He came to free us. And he brought grace and we need to, we need to receive that grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was, I'm not going to get into the whole marriage and divorce. Um, I could, but I, um, I really wanted to focus here on being married to the word. And the last scripture is the Song of Solomon 5.1. I am come into my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine and my milk. Eat, O oh friend, drink ye, drink abundantly, O oh beloved. Ha, he wants us all to be in unity in him, doesn't he? He wants us all to be in unity in his love, in his word, and how we are his garden. How we are his garden. You know, he plants us in different places in his garden. He can transplant us anywhere he wants to in his garden. If we need more shade, if we need more sun, if we need more water, he is our master gardener. And how he loves to come around you and smell your sweet fragrance. You know, when we're walking in the spirit, when we're walking in the love and the peace and the joy, in long suffering, in meekness and humility, we give off that fragrance to him. When we speak his word to him, when we speak the word back to him, it's like that myrrh, the beauty of his word, the essence of him. Hallelujah. Being married to Jesus, being married to the word, for he keeps us. He keeps us from sinning. He keeps us in his presence. And we, we abide in him. We abide in his love. We abide in the living word. We yield to the Holy Spirit. In the living word, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise your glory, Son. We love you, Jesus. You are the living word. Oh, may you refresh us today with your living word. May your, may your living word pour over us like water. It could be a hot day today. May your Living water, refresh us. Cool us off with your living word. May you have your way in us. We love you and we trust you, Lord God. We abide in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just wanted to stop this recording and then we'll share. Um.